Oke. Okay. Alright. So, uh, okay, what we what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do some. Uh, and we're going to do uh, we're going to take up another important uh, you know, concept or topic. Uh, this is some this is known as a warehouse order creation. Alright, or should I say warehouse order creation rules? All right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, so let's let's just do a recap. Okay. Let's exactly do a recap. When we had done something you known as a warehouse, you know, when we started off trying to first when we first uh, you know heard of this concept known as warehouse order or a warehouse task, what exactly we had discussed. Okay. So basically, uh, we had we have discussed three important terms when you're talking about. Uh, any action or any execution that's being performed in EWM, okay, there are these documents which get created, okay, and those documents are first, uh, those documents are warehouse request, a warehouse task, and a warehouse order, okay. Basically, a warehouse request would be the first document that gets generated whenever there's an any operation, let's say there's an inbound operation, there's an outbound operation, or else there's some, some kind of in, internal movement that needs to be done. The warehouse request would be the first document that would be generated in the system. That's that's the first document that gets that gets triggered, and based on the warehouse request, okay, based on the warehouse request, the document that gets created or should be created to execute the operation would be a warehouse task. Okay, so now a warehouse request. A warehouse request would basically have, a, you can say, a one-to-one -one relation with your, uh, you know, with your inbound deliveries or your outbound deliveries. A one-to-one relation. You could -one, uh, have a one, uh, you know, one is to one relation wherein you can have, uh, you know, uh, based on your item level. At your item level, you'll have multiple warehouse requests. Okay. A warehouse task. Okay. A warehouse task. You can have multiple warehouse tasks. Okay, per line item, per delivery, or you can have one warehouse task per line item, or should I say, per delivery? Entire for an entire delivery, you can have, you know, your your warehouse task can be can you can go ahead and and make it in that way. Now, the warehouse order, okay, the warehouse order is basically an entire work package. Which is uh, equivalent to a transfer order in WM. Okay, is equivalent to a transfer order. A warehouse order would have a combination of all warehouse tasks, which in turn would have a combination of all the warehouse requests for a certain operation. So, warehouse order is basically a work package that, based on your warehouse order, you would be going ahead and segregating the work in your warehouse. So as a warehouse supervisor or as a consultant, when we go to any client, we will be first going and understanding how does their entire operation work, how many resources do they have, resources I'm talking about manpower, plus I'm talking about something like let's say, a, 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 you know, a material handling equipments, let's say how many forklifts do they have, how many handheld, uh, you know, uh, let's say, you know, hand operated, uh, you know, sliders do they have how many uh, you know uh, contract laborers or how many laborers do they have and what's the exact uh, what's the entire layout of their warehouse now based on that in their current system you know how do these people uh, go ahead and and uh, distribute the workload amongst these people you know amongst the workers how many inbounds do they have how many outbounds do they have how many internal movements do they do on a typical day you know on one typical day how many you know uh, movements do they have within the warehouse Based on that, we would then go ahead and identify, okay, how do I create my warehouse order? Do I have to create my warehouse order in a certain way so that the work gets distributed evenly? At the same time, the, my tasks, or should I say, the, the operations that I'm that are that are going to be executed within the warehouse are executed on a, you know, uh, in a basically in an optimum way so that I am not going ahead and probably using going to be using the same person to do two different types of work at the same time. How do I go ahead and ensure all that? 
how is it that I go ahead and say that okay fine if, if I have got a certain warehouse uh, if I've got a certain inbound operation of a let's say uh, you know, I need to go ahead and, and, and uh, go put away of let's say 10 pallets okay 10 pallets which are 10 HUs if I want to do that now a pallet one pallet can be let's say you know it could be 15 kgs or it could be 100 kgs now you never know what exactly is there inside that pallet so if that is the case, okay, if it's a pallet or some, let's say if it's a jumbo bag, you know, a jumbo bag which is like one metric ton, you know, it's got let's say some kind of, uh, you know, you can have, a, you probably, you have a warehouse for, you know, fertilizers, where you've got these huge jumbo bags, which is got urea in it or whatever, phosphorus or whatever it is, some kind of chemical, fertilizer inside that. So if that is the case, if you got such 10 huge bags, as in 10 metric tons, how do you go about, you know, actually, doing a put away of that. Do you go ahead and assign all of that to just one resource or do you want to go ahead and give it to, to multiple resources or uh, do you want to go ahead and say that okay I've got two resources, I've got two forklifts so I will assign it to do both of these people so which means that I will create a you know a where uh, I'll do I'll create two different warehouse of this. So if that is the case then I will say that okay if, if, if I need to create two warehouse orders for these 10 HUs, then in that case I'll have to create, you know, I can I can go ahead and create, you know, five warehouse tasks, you know, five warehouse tasks per order, which means I'll be creating two orders. Okay. Do I have to do I should I go ahead and create in that way? Or should I create just one warehouse task with five HUs and then one warehouse order? Okay. So that's the basic uh, calculation or the math that you'll be doing and that, and based on that you'll be going here and saying okay fine if this is the case if this is scenario I'll be going here and doing the configuration for my warehouse order creation. So this configuration that you do this basic understanding that you know if I want to go ahead and and if I want to go ahead and create something you know uh, like over here like we see over here again okay, we've got 500 kgs is inbound delivery one at you is 100 kgs. So do I create how many, how many, you know, how do I go ahead and create it? Do I say that one warehouse task of 100 kgs, okay, or for which, will, which will make the five warehouse orders, or do I just create one warehouse task with just one warehouse order? How do I go about it? Okay, that's the basic, that's the basic understanding that we need to have. So based on this, if you go ahead and, do, and, and create any warehouse order, that is known as a warehouse order creation rule. So for that, first concept that we need to understand is what exactly is a sort rule. Okay. <coughs> now basically, if I want to go ahead and uh, you know create these various, if I want, if I want to go ahead and create a warehouse order, the first thing that I need to do is I need to sort the warehouse orders based on a certain a certain in certain criteria or a certain parameter now if you recall correctly there was something which is known as you know when we created uh, when we were creating our stock removal rules we had multiple fields that we had right now based on those fields we could go ahead and create a stock removal rule you know saying that okay i need to create a stock removal rule based on a batch all right or, or else i'll say no I want to create a stock removal rule based on shelf life or else I want to create a stock removal rule based on my goods receipt date. Uh, even inside the goods receipt date or, or else I will say that I want to create it on a, on a batch and all those batches inside those batches I want to create it on a certain goods receipt date which I probably can use it as an ascending or a descending order or something but I can go ahead and create it accordingly. Okay? So just like that, we've got some something which is known as a sort field. 
Okay. So I can go ahead. So first, the first thing that I'll have to do is I'll have to create a rule. How do I create a rule? These are standard rules which are, which are available within the system. Okay, there's something which is known as a pick path. There's something which is known as a consolidation group and pick path. Uh, basically, uh, a pick path would be that you want you going ahead and doing a picking along the path of your warehouse. Okay, then there's something which is known as a pick pass. Okay, pick pack and pass. There's something which is known as that. So there are multiple, you know, uh, rules. Uh, based on that, okay, if I want to go ahead and do a sorting on certain on something like this, okay, on a pick path. Then in that case, on which field, okay, on which field do I have to do the sorting? Do I have to do the sorting on a certain type? Okay. Do I say that I need to do a sorting on the sort sequence? How do I sort it? Okay. I can go ahead and create. I can go ahead and create my sorting based on let's say the stock type, or else I can go ahead and create my sorting based on the destination storage section. So what it will do is it will go ahead. It will say that okay, fine. If I've got so many, if I've got so many, uh, you know, uh, storage bins, and I need to go and do a picking, so it will go ahead and do a sorting based on my store destination storage sections or my destination storage bins. I can go ahead and create it on that. So it, what it will do is it will say that okay, okay, if you want to do a, if if there's a certain kind of a, a put away operation that needs to be done, and I understand that there are, uh, you know. Let's say there are ten bins that need to be filled, so it will go and do a sorting on those ten bins, and based on that, your warehouse orders can be created. That's the sort field, okay? Guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the next thing that we know that that we can that we have uh, that we need to understand is something which is known as a filter rule. Okay, so let's just take this example. Basically, uh, this warehouse order uh, warehouse order rule warehouse order creation rule filter. This is known as a heavy items. Okay, basically over here what we'll be doing is we'll be filtering. Okay, filtering the warehouse order. We'll be creating the warehouse order based on at the warehouse task level. Okay, and the filter type would be filter at the item level, which which means that if I've got ten items, okay, then in that case I will be creating individual warehouse tasks at the item level. So if I have got ten items, so then I will be creating warehouse tasks for each and every item. Okay. Now, based on that, I can go ahead and put in. I can go ahead and put in a threshold values. I will say if the minimum value is so, it should be so much, and the maximum value could be so much. I could say that I will be creating a warehouse task. Okay. At if the minimum weight is so much, or else the maximum weight is going to be so much. Let's say if I say that the maximum weight could be 100, the minimum weight could be 20. You know, that is something there that I can go ahead and that I can go ahead and maintain out here. Then I can, uh, you know, uh, you know, put in. If I want to put in a route, I can go ahead and put in a route out here. Okay. Then there's something which is known as a, uh, you know, if I go, if I need to go ahead and put a warehouse process type, okay, a WPT, I can have. Let's say I've got uh, different WPTs for my put away. Okay. Or I, let's say I've got different WPTs for my picking in my within my warehouse. Let's say I've got a, pick, a WPT for an exclusive WPT only for a customer, or should I say a group of customers who are spare part manufacturers? You know, sorry, spare parts who only want uh, spare parts from my warehouse. So for that, I'm obviously not going to go ahead and do, uh, you know, uh, not going to. I'm just going to be going ahead and picking, uh, you know, product-wise, item-wise. I'll be just going. Probably my warehouse executive will go to my uh, storage bin, open up the pallet. You know, understand that okay. How many of uh, each do I have to go and pick of this? And then I'll be going and let's say if we're talking about something like uh, you know uh, uh, screws or, or or something like copper wires or something. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to a to probably uh, uh, you know a work center or something like that, or I'm going to be cutting it, or else probably the user will probably the executive will probably go to that where uh, to that to that uh, uh, storage bin and manually count it. He's not going to do a complete etchu, right? 
So I can go ahead and put all these operations. I can say that I can I can I'll have only full, you know. Uh, I can say that I need to have only full pallet withdrawals, no full pallet withdrawals, no restrictions. I can go ahead and do that. If I if I have got let let's say a certain client wherein I have got uh, you know uh, probably this client is <coughs> he sends me HUs in such a way that I don't open them. Okay, I don't open them. I don't do any IO operation. He just sends them HUs and I just need to ship them back to their customers. If that is the case, then I probably would have created, let's say, I created a different WPD for that. And then I maintain the WPD over here, and then I can go ahead and put this, uh, you know, complete HU restriction. I can say that only full pallets have to be withdrawn. Uh, Manoj, yes. uh, something. Manoj? Yes, sir. You said uh, uh, if a um, uh, vendor, uh, I mean, uh, has sent a HU, uh -huh. uh, I will not do any uh, value addition, I mean no decon, con, nothing, I will just uh, have to send it back yeah, to yeah. Uh -huh. okay. like a distribution center. Okay. Now why Sorry? do I need to have a separate uh, process type for that? Uh, existing process type will not suffice? Uh, you can use it, nothing with like that, I am not saying, see the thing is, yeah. okay, you can go ahead and uh, all right. you can create different WPTs. Okay, you can create different WPTs. Let's say uh, you've got an example. I'm just giving you an example that you've got jumbo bags in your warehouse. Okay, or else let's say there is a user who who sends you these jumbo bags. There's a customer. Uh, you're receiving you're receiving uh, or let's say you're a manufacturing unit. You're a manufacturing company, and what you do is. <coughs> You manufacture something which comes in jumbo bags also, in like one metric ton, 1.2 metric ton, 1.5 metric tons, and the same thing, the same product. Okay, the same product. You also go ahead and have it in pallets and cartons. Okay, but then you might have certain, uh, you know, you might have so, uh, you know, probably, uh, uh, let's say for some reasons, you might say that uh, you know I need to go ahead for certain customers. I just need to send them jumbo bags. And I so which means there's a full you know complete HU withdrawal. I don't want the system to go ahead and break anything. Do not basically go ahead and even try to attempt going here and picking a carton. Okay. okay. Which is a which is probably a part of inside a pallet or something. Like that. If that is the case, then you can go ahead and create two different WPTs, wherein one and where that one WPT will only go ahead and pick you know the HU type jumbo bags, and the other WPT will only go ahead and pick your uh, you know pallets. So you can go ahead and do that also. Oh. Okay. So basically, the, I'm just giving you an example, trying to you know you can probably use it in different scenarios. Trying to only give you an example if we want to go ahead and maintain it at the WBT level. Okay. Okay. So you can go ahead and maintain a WPT, and then you can go ahead and have this uh, you know the complete actual draw. Even if you don't maintain it, you can always say that okay, I just need to do whatever, no, no matter what the uh, warehouse process type would be, I will always do a complete withdrawal. You know, I can go ahead and have that. It's only when you divide, when you've got multiple warehouse process types across your warehouse, you know, for an inbound and outbound operations, then in that case it's better to try to limit them at every stage. Okay. You know, not just uh, you know determining. Like when we're doing a determining, we go ahead and maintain uh, you know the process type indicator and all that. Apart from that, also you can go ahead and say that okay, fine. If this is the warehouse process type that I'm always going to be using, then I would like to have a certain warehouse order creation rule, especially for that. Okay, and uh, this warehouse order creation rule are different for outbound and uh, inbound, right? It all depends upon what you maintain at your WPT level. Uh, okay. Okay. You can have the same. You can have the same. You can go ahead and say now over here. If you see this, this is for stock removal only. Okay. So then, which means that if I'm going to be using this only for my stock removal, then I will have only for I'll, I'll not have a tick over here. Okay. You see this? Okay. Yeah, got it. Got it. So Likewise, if I'm using, going to be using it for my motorway only, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll just specifically say that okay, I've used this WPD only for Twitter. Okay. Okay. So that basically, <coughs> that basically, uh, you know, we, we we try to understand that how do I go ahead and filter? You know, what are the filters that I'm going to be using when I go ahead and create a warehouse order creation rule? Okay. So now that we want, now that we know that I need to go ahead and do a filter at my at my item level and at the warehouse task, wherein I'll have a certain kind of a you know a weight volume kind of a threshold limit that I can go ahead and maintain. There's something which is known as a limit. Okay, what's the limit value? So if I'm having a certain warehouse order creation rule, okay, if I'm having a certain warehouse order creation rule, what is the limit value that I'm going to be maintaining for that warehouse order creation? Okay, so when I will say that, okay, fine, like uh, like we're taking this example where we said that, okay, if my HU is 100 kgs, only if my HU is 100 kgs, more than 100 kgs, would I be creating one warehouse task? Okay. Okay. So if that is the case out here. Let's say we're going to having. Uh, let's take an example. Maximum. Okay. One item. So we here. Then this, I would go ahead and say that okay, if my, if for a certain, I've got, I'm probably dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, I'm probably dealing with HUs which are huge. Okay. So then in that case, it's it's probably not possible for my warehouse, uh, sorry, for my warehouse executive also and also my forklift. I don't want to go ahead and tax up my forklift in such a way that, you know, it kind of becomes, uh, you know, uh, I will not be able to handle more than two HUs or something like that, more than one item. Okay. So in that case, if I want to go ahead and, and create a, uh, if I want to go ahead and create a limit, basically, then in that case, I can go ahead and put it at, a, at the, at my, at, a, you know, I can put in a weight. I will say that the maximum weight for any warehouse task that you're going to be creating within my warehouse, warehouse would be 25 kgs. Okay, I can go ahead and do that. Or else, if I want to go ahead and say that, you know, maximum number of HUs that I'm going to be doing is five or it's ten, I can go ahead and, and and you know maintain it in such way. I can say that you know maximum number of items, maximum number of items, which means let's say if I've got uh, you know, 10 items in my warehouse, uh, in, in, in basically I've got 10 items in my delivery. So the maximum number of items that will be considered for, uh, you know, per warehouse order would be 5. So I have 5 warehouse, if I have 5 items per warehouse order, which means if I've got an outbound delivery or an inbound delivery, okay, of 10 items, 10 delivery items, so then 5 of them will be clubbed into one warehouse order, okay. I can also go ahead and put in some limits based on uh, you know the number of HUs, maximum number of HUs. You know, I can put in the maximum number of HUs. I can also go and limit it on the maximum number of WTs per HU. Okay, I can go ahead and put these uh, you know the, these basic limits so that when whenever whenever a warehouse order create when a, whenever a warehouse order or a warehouse task is being created, you know, in the system, it will go ahead and consider these limit values. Okay, we'll go ahead and consider these limit values and based on that it will create the, it will aid or should I say it will help in, a, it will enable the system to go ahead and create the warehouse order. Okay? Uh, Manoj? Yeah, Sushi. Uh, warehouse task can be created uh, for each uh, uh, item, right? Yes. It is not like uh, for one or more items we can create one warehouse task. See over here. Yeah. Just a minute. You see this? Shashi? Uh, he's on uh, call, I suppose. Oh, okay. Uh, what is there here? Complete uh, pallet withdrawal. Sorry? No, you were uh, telling something about uh, this here. About? No, the he was asking where those tasks will be a one is to one. Uh, it will always be one is to one, right? Yeah. 
see the ba basic the thing is you can you know it, it all depends upon how you want to go ahead and create it see the thing is over here you can, I can go ahead and have a limit Okay, okay. You see this? Yeah, yeah. Minimum number of dev WTs per HU, maximum number of dev WTs per HU. So if one okay. item has uh, 10 HUs, I can maintain uh, two here, then it will create five arrows task, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, got it. Um, okay. So it depends only on HU or it, can it be based on uh, weight also? Weight and weight quant also. quantity weight. or? Wait, 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 wait. But not, not on quantity. Not on quantity. Okay. <clears throat> because quantity cannot be, you know, you can't have quantity, right? It, it might be like, let's say, uh, if I one each could be ten kgs, okay. Yeah. For a certain for a certain product, and at the same time one each one each can be equal to. Uh, yeah, maybe one know, gram. Let's say five hundred kgs. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. Clear, Manus. Sorry? Clear now. Sashi? Yeah, it is clear now. It's clear? Okay. Then, uh, there's this very important uh, concept, which is known as a packing profile. Okay? Uh, basically, you'll be using a, you know, you'll be using a packing profile, uh, in your, uh, you know, a lot of operations within the warehouse. Uh, whenever, okay, there might be a lot of scenarios that you might face, depending upon the uh, client and depending upon the uh, industry wherein you're going ahead and, and probably going to be implementing um, EWM. You might have a lot of scenarios wherein uh, what you want to do is you want to basically create a an HU, okay? You want to go ahead and create a handling unit, okay? Uh, probably, let's say you're not hand, you're not you're not dealing with uh, HUs within your warehouse. Okay? You're not dealing with HUs within your warehouse. It's only that uh, when you go ahead and do when you're probably going ahead and doing a you know outbound operation or something like that, that that that's the exact time when you are going ahead and creating an HU. Okay, uh, you're going ahead and creating an HU so that you have some kind of tracking. You probably want to go ahead and do a, you know uh, you don't want the products that you have within your warehouse. You know, uh, probably for your handling, uh, you know, uh, transportation and handling, you want to go ahead and create these HUs or something like that. So you don't want to go ahead and you know manually take it to a to a work center and and create all that. No, you don't want to go ahead and do all this operation. You just want to create these HUs on the go on the fly. You want to go ahead and create it. But then there's something you know as a packing profile. Okay. Uh, you know, this is the you know the, the example that closest example that we usually uh, that we use. Okay, you can go ahead and create a packing profile, wherein you know you can you'll say that if I want to go ahead and create a certain kind of a uh, you know if I'm going ahead and creating a warehouse order, okay, if I'm going ahead and creating a warehouse order, how do I go ahead and create my packing profile? I would say that do I have to go ahead and create uh, you know these pick catches? I'll have to create the certain which is known as a pick HU. A pick HU is basically whenever I'm doing some kind of a picking, okay, within my warehouse. Alright. I need to go ahead and do a I need to create a pick HU on the go, on the fly, and then put no, put all these items that I've received, okay, in that HU. That HU is not something which I will create, I'll be creating manually. It will be created dynamically on the fly. Okay. 
and it will also all, always be based on a certain kind of a you know sorting this sorting is the same sorting that we go ahead and use when we go ahead and, and start creating our warehouse order creation rule so there is something to know the sorting where we have a pick path or a consolidation group or something like that and based on that we've got certain sort fields now based on that i can go ahead and create you know i can go ahead and create these pick issues all right and you know while there while this basically all my warehouse tasks are being created okay when I, wherever my warehouse tasks are being are going here and getting created at that time i will go ahead and create these uh, my packing profile will go ahead and determine how do i go ahead and create this pick issue and this packing profile okay this packing profile will be maintained at my warehouse task level at my wpd level I go and create. Sorry, uh, basically I go and create where my warehouse order creation rule would be maintained over here. Okay, so in my warehouse order creation rule, so this is my warehouse order creation rule. I'll be going here and putting my packing profile at my warehouse order creation rule level. So basically, I will be saying here, okay, fine. If uh, you know when I so now that I've created all this, now that I've, now that I've, now that we have created, what exactly is the sort field? What are the sort rules? What at what level I'm going to be doing the filter? And what are the limits? What are the threshold limits that I'll be maintaining for my creation of my warehouse task? Okay, based and then I would actually go ahead and start defining my warehouse order. Okay, so if I'm doing that, then. I'll be going here and saying that okay, if this is my warehouse number and this is my warehouse order creation rule. So then, in that case, I will say that what is going to be my item filter? The item filter is the same thing that we had, you know, defined over here. So heavy items, it will say that the minimum weight for any item to be qualified for a warehouse task would be, you know, 20 kgs. You know, this is my item filter that will be create that I'll be putting in. Then, then if I'm going to have a certain limit over here, this MX, this limit is MX five. The limit that we're using is MX five, which means that maximum five items, okay, per per warehouse order. Okay. Then there is something which is known as an inbound sorting. An inbound sorting is basically whether I'm going to be using a pick path, okay. Uh, then we can then we'll be going ahead and putting a packing profile based on which how do I go ahead and create my packing pick issues how do I go ahead and create that you can always go ahead and put in a preparation time and all that which is definitely which usually is not uh, you only go ahead and consider that whenever you are some you have some kind of an SLA within your warehouse wherein let's say your third party uh, you know logistics warehouse wherein you've got a certain SLA based on which you need to go ahead and uh, you know probably compensate the client if you don't go ahead and perform a certain picking or certain uh, you know uh, you know put away operation of the client you know so if that is the case then you'll be going ahead and doing this uh, you can go ahead and maintain a preparation time for that another thing is uh, you can also go ahead and put in a storage process you know the storage process which we had created uh, you know for our uh, you know uh, you know process oriented storage control you can go ahead and maintain that storage process over here. So based on that, you know, whenever this is, <coughs> wherever you're using this kind of a warehouse order creation rule, irrespective of which WPT that you maintain this is at, you know, this storage process would be executed. Okay. Manoj, uh, this limit is there, right? The five item. Sorry? Limit of five item is there, right? In that. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, that is five items in the sense how it is five pieces or five each. Five items would be delivery items. Okay. So that equals quantity only, right? Sorry. That equals quantity only, right? Quantity. Uh, oh, that is five different materials. You mean? Sorry. 
five different line items huh, of a delivery nine items you talk about nine items okay you not talking about each is over here okay so how does that uh, impact uh, heavy items we are telling a uh, limit of five items, no limit of five items we have given right yeah so how see suppose i have a delivery where i have uh-huh. five, five different spares five different spares aha uh-huh. okay one uh, motor is there one um, shaft is there one uh, two belts are there aha uh-huh. okay so how does this limit uh, come so suppose i have 10 10 pieces pieces of uh, five different components yes so this limit i have given as five items maximum limit of yes. five items so while uh, so you can see uh, but at the end of the day you're also putting in uh, the weight right okay you putting another parameter over there you putting another parameter no. see uh, it is not it is not going to be necessary that you will always be going ahead and hand dealing with only crankshafts and motors and all that yeah right yeah you might have certain things where you are just talking about carburetors or something you know very very small items yes so in that case you'll be talking about at at the you know maximum weight yeah right this is Okay, now Hello? I got it. Now I got it. He doesn't want uh, of any material more than five items to be added, uh, irrespective of yeah. the weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hello. Hello. Come on. Yeah, so where is that? Yeah, yeah, I am there, Manoj. Yeah. So once you go and create, uh, you know, your warehouse order creation. Okay, basically you create the suit. You can go ahead and have, you know, uh, basically you can go and do a, you know, you can an entire overview. Let's say you just put in some kind of a. Okay, so if this is your warehouse. Let's say you've got these many warehouse order creation rules or W O C Rs. Now, based on this, okay, based on these uh, W O C Rs, I can go ahead and see that you know I can basically have a complete uh, overview of what exactly is my uh, you know how how exactly my warehouse order creation uh, every W O C R exists or how is my every how does my every W W O C R look at look like. Okay, you can go ahead and perform uh, this this kind of a verification operation whenever we're going ahead and creating this uh, you know warehouse order creation. Okay, and this warehouse order creation rule we'll be going ahead and maintaining this WCR. We'll be maintaining at your. <coughs> now we can go ahead and maintain it at your uh, WPT level. We'll say that okay, if this is the WPT, then I'll be going ahead and maintaining it in such a way. Okay. Manoj, yes, sir. Hello, Manoj. Yes, sir. Tell me. There is another. Uh, there is another thing. Uh, another that uh, warehouse activity area. What is that? Yeah. Warehouse process yes. type. Sorry. No, no. In the warehouse process type, there is uh, one more. Oh. Yeah. So W O C R activity area. Yeah. So what is that? Okay, that's over here. Okay. okay. See, basically, uh, if you recall, if you if you recall, we said that I can go and create uh, my entire warehouse. I can go and differentiate it based on activity areas. Okay. I can go ahead and say that if there, if I've got a certain warehouse, if my inside inside my warehouse, I can go ahead and create activity areas, which would be a combination of uh, you know uh, like in, like in, like let's say an entire storage type can be a can be an activity area, or else you can have 
you know, let's say we've got two storage types, or within one storage type only you've got, we can have multiple activity areas. We can go ahead and create those activity areas. And, you know, whenever I go ahead and create these activity areas, I can go ahead and maintain specifically which kind of activity needs to be done first whenever there are two kind of activities. Let's say if I want to do a put away operation and a picking operation within a certain activity area, you know, which is the first sequence? Which is the which is the activity that needs to be taken care of first? Now, let's say if you were Nile within your warehouse, and uh, you know there is a picking there. There are these two forklifts, okay? You know there are these two forklifts which are already covered. You have got two operations. You've got an outbound delivery, and at the same time you've got an inbound delivery, which has to be uh, probably you know executed. So I need to do a put away, and at the same time I need to do a picking. If now if that is the case. How do I go ahead and, and it is from probably to the same activity area? Okay, I have created these, you know, uh, the system identifies that it's the same for the same activity area. If that is the case, then I can create a sequence. I can create a sequence based on which I will say that, uh, you know, for put for put away, or sorry, should I should I say for picking, the sequence should be one. You know, for such kind of activity within this activity area. The only thing that needs to be done first is picking, and then the next operation that I need to be do that I need to do is, is uh, put away. Now, based on that, I can go ahead and create these multiple you know activity areas with different activities. I can go ahead and put in different activities over here. Uh, I can have the the standard activities that you have, you know, stock removal, put away, and I will give it a, a, a sequence number. I will be giving it a sequence number, and I will be attaching a WCR along with that. Okay. I'll be assigning a WCR along with that now. Right. Now when I go ahead and uh, you know, when I go ahead and maintain, okay, when I go ahead and maintain this WCR rule over here, it will say that what exactly is going to be my activity, you know, how do I go ahead and activate, you know, which is the activity area that need that needs to be, uh, uh, that I need to search. So if I, if I go ahead and say that I need to do for a certain WPT, sorry, for a certain warehouse order creation rule, I have maintained, or should I say for my activity areas, I have maintained that only, a, uh, you know, uh, the sequence, the first thing, the first sequence that needs to be done is, uh, you know, I need to go ahead and do a certain kind of a, uh, only a picking operation or a put away operation. If that is the case, then in that case it will go ahead and identify only my destination bins, only my only the uh, you know wherein I need to do some kind of a put away. So here the activity area for WCR search will be either a blank which is for a source or else a one you know the option one which is only for des uh, for destination. Which means since this is a put away WPT, okay. Now let's take an example of a, a stock removal WPD. So if this is the case, then the activity areas and the, all the activity areas that will search is wherein it has to go ahead and there is a, there are the source activity areas wherein I'll have to go ahead and do a picking. So it will go ahead and do a you know the warehouse order creation would start off from all those activity areas wherein I have maintained. You know, wherein I have maintained, let's say if I go ahead and maintain my activity as, uh, you know, stock removal, if I go ahead and maintain my stock, my activity as stock removal, which means that I'm going to be doing, for all these activity areas, I'm going to be doing a picking, right? I'm going to be doing a picking operation, okay? So if I need to do a picking operation, which means that all these activity areas would be serving as a source for me, from where I can go ahead and do a withdrawal of items. So if that is the case, then in that case, for certain WPTs, I can go ahead and I'll, the system would directly go ahead and identify, first go ahead and look at those activity areas only. Okay? Shashi, you there? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Shashi, you there? Yeah, Manoj. Yeah. Let's take another example. 
Uh, okay. Another thing is, let's now this is an example for a returns WPT. Okay. A return WPT. Okay. Whenever we are trying to do a return WPT over here, we are we are going ahead and 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 uh, basically what we're doing is we're going ahead and receiving it, right? Okay. So when you're going ahead and going ahead and doing a receiving, so I need to do uh, basically then in that case my activity area for my WSER search would be only destinations. All the destinations would be basically if I am receiving something, I need to do a put away within my warehouse. Now these are basically these uh, you know uh, okay fields such as your warehouse process category, your activity, your WSER activity area. Okay, all these are something which you would get in your standard you know this is as good as uh, you know uh, these parameters these two parameters you know it is as good as these two parameters so whenever we are talking about any WPT that is related to a put away operation you will always have the WCR activity area as one whenever there is a picking operation for any WPT you will have the WCR activity area as blank and the warehouse process category would be a two and your activity would be a pick okay Okay. Yeah. What about for uh, internal movements or physical inventory? If we're talking about internal movements over here, let's see. So then, in that case, we're talking about a, you know, a transfer. This is my internal movement. So for my internal movements, my activity area, you see basically over here my activity would be, uh, you know, internal, my warehouse process category. <coughs> my warehouse process category would be an internal movement. Over here, the thing is, I am going to do a, you know, over here it is basically I am picking it from somewhere, I am going in and obviously I am going to be putting it somewhere else, right? Okay? Yeah. So then in that case, basically I am going to go ahead and receive it from a certain area. So first I'm only going to go ahead and do a picking. I'm going to take, I'm going to pick it from a certain place and then I'm going to do a put away. So what is the first operation that I'll be doing? So based okay. on that, okay. over here, it will be only source. Okay. So now let's take another example. So we talked, we spoke about returns. This transfer posting. So we're talking about non-loading. Okay. So for non-loading, we'll always be talking about a destination, right? Shashi? Yeah. 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 At the same time, so basically over here, when you're talking about an unloading, you'll always be talking about a destination because you're going to be doing unloading it at a certain area. In that case, always your WCR activity area would be your it would be maintained as one. Okay. Okay. Basically, uh, whenever we're going ahead and creating, uh, you know, more probably whenever, whenever you're going to go ahead and, and uh, uh, in fact, define you know, our uh, or WOCR within the warehouse. The first thing that we probably will have to, uh, you know, go ahead and understand, you know, what are the ways. We basically can go ahead and identify or should I say segregate on, uh, okay. On the number of operations, I'll say that okay. What are the number of operations that I'm having? Let's say if I'm talking about inbound operations, outbound operations, you know, internal movements, I can go ahead and maintain that in such a way. And after that, post that. 
I will say that how many how many internal movements or how many internal transactions do I have per day? Let's say if I've got 150 internal transactions, I've got at the same time I've got uh, you know let's say 300 or 400 uh, you know outbound movements that I'm doing per day. Internal movements could be limited to uh, should I say like you know, let's say uh, roughly two yeah, roughly 100 internal movements per a day. Now inside that. Okay, then I go and can go and do a segregation. Out of these 150 that I'm usually doing, okay, how many different types of items do I have? What are the different weights that I'm talking about? Uh, you know, how many forklifts do I have? How many resources do I have? You know, resources could be you know, if I'm talking about resources. Um, Have labors, and then you're talking about energies, the machine handling equipment. So let's say I've got per day, every day I've got ten laborers, and I've got let's say four four years. So then in that case, I go and basically create a matrix. You go ahead and create a matrix, and based on this only, you will start. In fact, uh, you know, this is the first Excel sheet that you usually be, will be creating so after you, you know. Uh, Go ahead and sit with your, uh, you know, the business representative, your business, uh, your operations person, and your warehouse uh, supervisor. So based on this, you'll go ahead and create an Excel sheet. You'll say that okay, if this is the if if this is my scenario, these are the various scenarios that I'm looking at. If this is a scenario, okay, these are the different, uh, you know, these are the different combinations. So and we'll be going ahead and creating a matrix. And based on this matrix, you'd be going here and taking every every parameter, every single parameter of your warehouse order creation rule would be then selected. And based on that, only you'd be going here and creating. Rather than directly we rather than be directly jumping into the screen to the creation, you would first define a certain matrix. Okay, we would first define a certain matrix and say that okay, fine, this is the case. You know, this is the case, then this is how we're gonna go ahead and create it. It's basically uh, you know, probably not the right example, but this is something which I'm recalling right now. Let's say if I have, uh, you know, you know, in, in purchase orders, in MM, we've got certain something to know as release strategy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're having, uh, you know, whenever we're going here and whenever we go ahead and define the release strategy itself, we have we basically create an entire matrix. You know, how many purchasing groups do we have? You know, uh, how many documents do we have? Purchasing documents do we have? You know, what is the maximum level? You know, what's the various? Where? What are the various slabs? You know, if the, if this is a slab, then how many levels do you want to go ahead and create it? How many different levels of release 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 authorities do we need to give? Who are the persons that you need to go ahead and define? So you basically create a release strategy matrix, right? Yes. So even out here, you'll be going ahead and creating something like this. You'll be going and create, you'll be basically putting in all the data, the facts, and based on that, you'll be going ahead and creating a certain, you know, you'll be creating the. At the end of the day, at once you go ahead and, and uh, you know, uh, complete this Excel sheet, you'll identify how many item filters do we have. You know, what are the maximum threshold limits? What are the minimum maximum threshold limits for every, you know, for for all your warehouse orders, for all your warehouse tasks? Uh, unless and until we don't read. Go ahead and create our warehouse order creation rule properly. Then, in that case, we are either underutilizing or we are over going to be overutilizing our uh, laborers and our resources. Okay. So imagine if you don't go ahead and create a warehouse order creation, if you don't create a, go ahead and, uh, create a proper rule for our warehouse orders, then in that case, we might probably have a lot of uh, equipments which might get into maintenance time and again. Basically, what you're doing is, uh, you know, you're not creating your uh, warehouse orders properly. Which means that your forklift is always engaged. <coughs> which means that your forklifts are always engaged, or probably you're overloading your forklifts. You know, or probably you find out that your, uh, you know, your warehouse or your warehouse supervisor is always uh, short of, uh, you know, manpower. You know, uh, Manoj, uh, see the. We are given as uh, ten laborers and uh, some quantity. So appropriately, we create uh, say ten uh, warehouse tasks. Sorry. 
See, this uh, Vero's uh, order creation rule will create different tasks. Uh-huh. It will create the number of tasks and, of course, uh, number of uh, Vero's orders and how the work should be split, right? Yes. Uh, how how do we know which laborer uh, will do the which task? Okay. That also, uh, that also has to be assigned, right? Sorry? That also has to be assigned somewhere, right? Yes, yes, it is assigned at the warehouse order rule, at the, at basically at the warehouse order level. I will just show you that. You see this processor and the resource? Yeah, yeah. So what, what is the difference between processor and a resource? What is the difference between this uh, resource and a processor? Your processor would be your warehouse supervisor. Okay. And your resource will be the actual person. Okay. Why, why this uh, difference? Or else, or else your processor will be you know, uh, the warehouse executive and your resource will be your equipment. Now, why this uh, differentiation? Sorry? Why this differentiation? Uh, Hello? Yeah, why this differentiation, Manoj, between processor and resource? I see, basically the thing is, uh, you know, when you're talking about this processor, a processor will always be a, you know, you're going here and you're saying that uh, who is exactly going here and, you know, performing this operation. Who is the, who is the person who is performing this operation. Okay? okay? And your resource is, you're going here and saying that, okay, fine, if this is my resource, who is exactly my resource? I mean, you can have a certain, uh, your processor could be your warehouse supervisor or your, uh, you know, warehouse, uh, let's say you've got one warehouse operations guy. And he's got multiple warehouse supervisors. He'll say that, okay, I want a warehouse supervisor for my inbound. I'll have my warehouse supervisor for outbound. And I'll have my warehouse supervisor for my intern movements. And these people will be working in shifts. Okay? Okay. Now, in this then case... In that case... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? No, no, carry on. Yeah. So, basically, what I'll do is, I, whenever that is the case, I'll be always going and putting a, resource, a processor. I'll say that, okay, fine, this processor is is I am going to be creating a pro so whenever a warehouse order is created let's say I've got three shifts running I've got you know uh, let's say a 7 to 3, 3 to 11 and 11 to 7 morning shift and in all these three shifts I've got <coughs> you know uh, probably in the first and second shift I've got a lot of people you know I've got specific uh, a specific person for inbound, specific person for outbound you know uh, and for intern movements but for my third shift I don't have these, uh, you know, processors. I just, I mean, I don't have two different, uh, three different supervisors. I just have two supervisors. One person who looks af after the inbound and outbound and the other person who looks after the internal movement. Or, you know, if that is the case. So if I want to go ahead and maintain it, I go ahead and put that processor, I men I'll explicitly maintain that processor over here and then I will go ahead and confirm it. So I exactly I come to know that whenever, you know, who are the different processors for my warehouse orders and what are the resources that were used? Who are the resources? No, the thing is, uh, why in this uh, particular, uh, does it uh, default automatically? We have to maintain somewhere, right, for this uh, warehouse. Sorry? Business. No, do we maintain somewhere for this uh, particular uh, resource, we'll do this task? Somewhere would have been made. Yes, 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 you have to, you, there, is a, there is a configuration over here. Okay.
See this? Ah, uh, resource management. Okay. See this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So I create a processor. Okay. Okay. I I give him, you know, basically a processor would be like a warehouse supervisor only. Okay. I give him a personal number and everything, you know? Yeah. So many a times you'll have, uh, you know, your HR business system which means, you know, I will go ahead and let's say I have got, uh, you know, a certain warehouse, I've got let's say multiple warehouses, I've got a huge facility, I've got let's say 10 warehouses within my facility, you know, let's say I've got like my entire facility is like 135 acres, you know? and I've got multiple warehouses and uh, the thing is it's not that one warehouse supervisor is always working one warehouse only he can probably I'll give him operation today I'll you know uh, I'll, he might have to probably fill in for another uh, warehouse supervisor who's not come today yeah, yeah. so I can go and make that assignment on all of you okay. you know that? this is master data only sorry this is master data or does it create a request uh... this is master data Okay. This does not create a request. Oh. oh, generally we see that uh, for certain warehouse tasks, the processor will be automatically, the resource will be automatically assigned. Okay. Sorry? Uh, for a certain warehouse task and all, resource will be automatically uh -huh. assigned. So how that... If we don't put anything, it will get automatically populated, right? Okay. No, somewhere it has to be assigned, right, for this particular uh, warehouse task and... It all depends upon... Uh, okay, yes, I'll show you this one. Out here, okay, yeah. we don't have any processors, we don't have exactly what is the you know, uh, resource, no. okay? I just go ahead and click, click on confirm, okay? Yeah. Is that confirmed? Yes. But if you see this, you see that there's no resource and there's no processor. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. So basically in your warehouse, let's say if I am if 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 uh, you know this is my user ID and I am basically the warehouse operations guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have been giving this Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that is the case, then in that case I need to specifically maintain all this, right? So if I, if in that case, in such cases I can go ahead and put in all these resources, you know, over here, I can go ahead and maintain, uh, I can go ahead and maintain uh, my resources. I'll, I'll put in all these resources exactly whenever I'm using some kind of an RIF or anything, right? Or if I if I go ahead and maintain what's my processor, I can go ahead and create these resources specifically. You know, uh, I will say that okay, I want to go ahead and create these resources for only kind of inbound operations, only kind of outbound operations. Okay. Okay. Now, can you create I one resource create and uh, can you create an asset? Sorry. Can you create one resource and uh, show me that how this uh, for how we assign it for inbound or outbound? Yeah, just a Basically, the first thing, whenever we want to go and create a resource, you'll be first going and creating a resource group. Okay, a resource group can be uh, you can segregate these resource groups as uh, let's say contract laborers, permanent laborers. Okay. Okay. Then you'll be putting in what's my queue type. 
you know what's the sequence what's my queue i can go ahead and create multiple queues internal movements inbound queues outbound queues okay 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 yeah now i go ahead and maintain i say that okay this resource group will only go ahead and create for my inbound and only for for my outbound operations and then i go ahead and create a resource i go ahead and create a certain resource with a, a certain resource group okay mm -hmm. and that resource group will be of having a certain resource type you know within within my con within my counter contract also i have skilled laborers unskilled laborers right yeah yeah <coughs> and i can also go ahead and sorry no 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 carry on please yeah i can also go ahead and put in uh, you know i will also say that if this resource is there if i have got a certain resource i'll only be <coughs> maintaining that resource for a certain inbound operation only okay 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 so yeah okay yeah so i'll be going ahead and i'll i'll can go ahead and further segregate that and then i'll put my execution priority if i take this uh, this resource so i will say that you know which uh, resource type uh, you know which are which are the bin access okay type of bin then i'll go ahead and create these various bin access types based on my warehouse i'll go ahead and create these various bin access types i will say that there might be certain skill laborer the skill laborers will always be working on forklifts right yes okay So if I'm going ahead and creating these forklifts, so these forklifts will only be used for, let's say, let's say I want to use these forklifts only for, uh, you know, within my bins, within my bin types, only for a certain level, you know, uh, above the second stack, above the third stack, or something like that. If I want to go ahead and create it, I will go ahead and create a certain bin access type, okay. <coughs> and then for that also i'll go ahead and maintain a, 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 a you know basic priorities i can go ahead and put in uh, the various hu types or the hu type groups that a certain resource type will always use then i'll be going ahead and putting uh, you know what is my what is the priority for that specific uh, you know for that specific resource what is the priority that we'll be maintaining what's the more priority more priority is in if i'm going ahead and creating a warehouse in a foreign certain warehouse i go ahead and create different modes just it just goes into resource management uh So, uh, so when you go ahead and create basically the certain mode, I will say that what is going to be my priority? Which am I going to be talking about on my you know uh, process types? I'm going. Am I going to be talking about my bin access type, or am I going to talk about my at my HU type level? So if that is the case, okay. Accordingly. So, and the weight basically a parameter weighting that uh, basically an evaluation point or sort of priority rating that you'll be giving for every mode that will be creating so once you go and create uh, this you know your execution priorities you have created your resource groups you've got certain resource types inside those resource types you've created a resource for that resource you will say that which is the whether you want to be using an inbound queue or an outbound operation for that okay and after that if i if i'm going to go ahead and and, and uh, process all that then in that case 
what are the priorities that I'll be? What is the priority? Which is the if I'm going to am I going to be talking about certain issues? If I have, if a certain resource is working on an inbound operation and he has to go out and pick up uh, you know pallets at the same time and cartons, so then which HU type group should he go and pick first? Which is which is going to be having the first priority? So all that you can go and create. Then you go and create a queue type sequence. So a certain resource group, what is the sequence of a certain queue? Okay. Inbound queue or an outbound queue. And this is something, these are the things that you'll be, and this queue that you have, right, is going to be maintained over here. Sorry. The certain queue that you maintain, uh, just a I'll just get back to you on the queue part, guys. Then, once you go ahead and maintain all of this, uh, when you, whenever you're going here and, and uh, you know, let's say I'll just take an example of this. So basically, uh, you know, whenever you're going ahead and, and confirming your warehouse order, at that level itself, you'll be going ahead and maintaining the process and something that you'll have to maintain dynamically. So, well, you there? So, well. So well? Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Uh, so well, you're able to hear me? Yes, Manoj, I'm able to hear you. Yeah. So they, you, are you saying was your question that you know this 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 process and the source code should come uh, uh, automatically? Now, how it comes automatically? Basically, see, there are hundreds of resources, right? Right. I, I may have four four forklift. I may have one supervisor or two supervisors. How does this system? Yes system managed to allocate uh, this particular resource, this particular uh -huh. this should go and uh, do the picking or put away. See, I mean, uh -huh. four, four, four clips. No. Right. So yeah. the thing is, you're not, you're not going to go and do it and do it automatically. Oh, this is, this happens manually, right? Yes, yes. When this is, that's the reason why you're doing this at the rate, at the time of confirmation. Okay, okay. When you're confirming the warehouse order, only at that screen you're maintaining this, right? Okay. Then this is a manual process. Yeah, this is something before you go ahead and, and uh, confirm your warehouse order. Okay. Before you go ahead and confirm your warehouse order, you're going ahead and, you know, asking the user to go ahead and maintain this resource on the processor. Okay, okay, okay. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Hola, Chile. Uh, Manos. Ya, yeah, Shishi. Um, so, in general, do we schedule any job to create these various products? Uh, no jobs as such. You know, there's something which is known as, uh, you know, wave management. Okay. Okay. Something which is known as wave management. So, what happens is a wave gets created. You know, a wave based on certain parameters, you'd be creating a certain wave, and that wave would create your multiple warehouse tasks based on your warehouse order creation rules okay that you have defined in the system and those waves you will already have your and then basically what you're doing is you'll be creating a you know there's something known as a condition record that you'll be maintaining for automatic creation of your tasks okay you'll be going and creating that now based on that and based on the combination of your wave template there's something known as a wave template based on that your warehouse tasks, whether it's inbound or outbound, it will be going ahead and it will get created. So you don't do a background job uh, for all that. Okay. Or else, so what you can do is, or else what you can do is, you can always go ahead and have, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, warehouse orders created, and you can have them locked. Basically, let's say if you are, uh, if you are a warehouse uh, supervisor and uh, you want to go ahead and create you want to say that you know there are certain operations uh, that you want to perform uh, like let's say there are certain uh, you know internal movements that you want uh, your 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 uh, you know your resources to be performed uh, during the night okay in the night shift then in that case you can always go ahead and create these uh, certain warehouse you can you can run a job or something like that or else it's you can go ahead and create these warehouse orders uh, and you can create them as locked so what happens is when you create them as locked, you'll have to get them unlocked and then the user can probably process them and all that. Okay. So, so we will be covering this wave, wave template creation everything, right? Uh, no, wave management is not going to be covered here. Wave, wave management is not a part of uh, EW110. Okay. Resource management? Sorry? Resource management? No, labor management is a part of 120 and 125. Okay. See, I told you this example wherein I can go ahead and, uh, you know, lock or unlock a warehouse order. Yeah. Uh, Shashi? No, no. Yeah. yeah. See, there is this, there's this one small configuration over here. See this WO lock? Yeah. So, if I select this WO lock and if I take this warehouse order creation rule, and I go ahead and maintain it over here for my internal movements. If I maintain it over here, okay? Okay. Then in that case, whenever a warehouse order is created with this WPT and this warehouse order creation rule, it will always be created as, as locked. So what happens is, what you're trying to do is you're creating these warehouse orders and you're keeping it for your warehouse super for your warehouse uh, user as uh, basically for your resources to be completed in the in the night shift. Okay. okay. Then in that case, this person will go ahead and uh, you know he will go ahead and do an unlock, and then also another thing is you can go ahead and assign your resources over here also. Okay. Now, what is this lock and unlock mean in uh, EWM, Manoj? Sorry. What does lock and unlock mean in EWM? Lock and unlock? Yeah. Nice. Lock so warehouse order is there, lock, unlock warehouse uh, order is there. If I lock it, uh -huh. what, what is the status then? I will not be able to process it? You will not be able to process it. Okay. 
because whenever you try to create a veros task it uh, says that uh, uh -huh. uh, veros order dot veros task has been knocked for the user we get that message right when you have that green light when you have a green light uh, indicator is there well creation uh -huh. it gives a message that veros order successfully locked unlocked like that so what does it mean actually successfully locked yeah. We get that message right when uh, confirming the Vero's order or creation of uh, Vero's task. Ah, uh -huh. so now let's say if you're going here and creating a Vero's uh, now any which is the status for this is completed. Completed. If you if you go Confirm. and confirm. Yeah, if you check for any uh, open Vero's order or Vero's task. Yeah. Now this is open. Uh, no, can you try to uh, uh, confirm it or? Uh... You want me to confirm it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Normally, uh, green light comes uh, when during inbound delivery or uh, I observed that. Just a minute. This is what you get. No, no, on the you have this uh, goggles right on the left side. So, yeah. Uh, next to that you have that blank uh, square, right? On that you get a green light. Yeah, there, there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah generally. I think that is for uh, warehouse order. Warehouse order creation, you will get that light. Yes, yes. No, that is you get it as a warehouse task. Yes, yes, task. Correct. Huh? Then the Vero's task. Can you open any way, open uh, Vero's task? Yeah, just a minute. Yeah, this is the warehouse task now. So you're saying that okay? Ah, so you're saying those two green lights that come, right? No, no. Uh, can you uh, try to open this and? Uh, no, you go to the order. Go to the order against the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just taking the order system. Yeah. IBD, IBD order. Sorry. No, this uh, this would have been uh, had an IBD order, right? Yeah, yeah, just a minute. That's what I'm select. That's what that's what I'm trying to. There is no PDI over here, reference. Just a minute. Okay. 
Ya. Yeah. Uh, you see that locked, uh, that green indicator, green light has come, right? Yes. yes, yes. What that shows it is locked. That shows it is locked. That but that does not mean that is uh, you know uh, there is nothing which is like an uh, you know basically what it does is it's, it has created a. A WPT, hmm. so it has created a WT, okay. Yeah, yeah. And this WT, okay, this this WT is a part of this. Hey, this is the warehouse, man. This one. This is the inbound delivery. Some form of it. This is this lock status is for your document. Okay. okay. There is no uh, relation between this log. Sorry. Is there any relation between the this log and what you showed in the? No, no, no. no. There is no relation. No, 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 no. Absolutely okay. not. Okay, okay. So what other options? That is your warehouse order level. Okay. Now what other options we have in that? Can you please go to the drop down? Sorry. Sorry. Can you go? Can you go? Go to the drop down. Right. Here. Yeah. No, you showed that lock. Uh, yes. What other options we have there? Uh, assign resource, unassign. Oh, here we assign the resources, right? Yes, yes. You can go and assign resource here. What is this uh, LSD? Yes. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. One zero one year. Now another thing is we can go ahead and unassign it also if you want. We can go yeah. and unassign it as source. It's not getting unassigned. Some reason. So basically, whenever a warehouse supervisor is going here and uh, you know, probably trying to uh, you know allocate jobs, okay. So you can go ahead and assign it over here and uh, manually take a printout of of your your warehouse uh, your warehouse orders and give it to your warehouse super uh, your uh, you know basically give these work packages to your uh, resources. Okay. 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 Okay, right, guys. So here? Yeah, yeah, Manoj, got it. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll hold it out here today. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then tomorrow we'll take up another uh, important thing. Okay. Okay, Manoj. And then we'll we'll uh, also do it in the system. Yeah, okay? yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Shashi, you there? Um. Yeah, yeah, Manoj. Yeah. Just uh, no just, just said that. Yeah, yeah, see, I said that we'll we'll take it up tomorrow. Okay. Hello. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine.
Yeah, yeah. Okay, Shashi. Okay, thanks. All right, guys. So you guys so, have a great day. About, uh, Manoj, uh, about that issue, inbound delivery couldn't be distributed. Yeah, yeah. See, the inbound delivery thing, uh, whenever you're creating a purchase order, uh, Soel and Shashi, both of you all, okay? Uh, okay. When you're creating the inbound, uh, when when you're creating the inbound delivery with respect to a purchase order, when that purchase okay. order that you create, in that purchase order, when you're creating it, you maintain the you know there is something you know is a confirmation tab over there. Yeah. In that confirmation tabs, select your confirmation. You know that confirmation control should be as confirmations. As of now, it is it is uh, selected as shipping and uh, shipping notification, right? Yeah. Selected as confirmations. Okay, so what's the difference actually? I don't know. See, basically, if you're selecting it as a shipping uh, notification, uh, what I found out was when I was doing it in a different system, it found out that you'll have to create a shipment document. Okay. There's a, there's a transaction which is known as uh, VT01N. You know, if you go ahead and create that and then assign this delivery to that shipment document, then it lets you do, uh, you know, distribute the uh, delivery. Okay. Okay, with this, you know, it just gives you this confirmation. This is something which you know, I'm, even I'm trying to explore. I mean, I'm trying to understand why it is not uh, allowing us to, you know, why does the distribution status does not change from A to B? You know, because till now when we were creating the inbound deliveries, the distribution status for this, those deliveries was, was A. Yeah. It was only relevant. It was not B, which was planned for uh, distribution. So, but uh, uh, IDAC is uh, uh, sent to the system. No, the IDAC is not. It's not really distributed only. How will it? How will the IDAC get generated? Uh, when I uh, see the log SLG one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So for that delivery, it said that uh, IDAC was created and distributed via some uh, LS. Okay. But if the IDOG is generated and it is distributed, the delivery is not yet distributed yet because the delivery will only be distributed when, first of all, will only be relevant for distribution when your distribution status is T. Mm -hmm. As of now, all the inbound deliveries that you are creating, the distribution status itself is A. Okay. Okay. Is there any uh, configuration? Uh, yes, there is a configuration. In fact, even that I am trying to check what exactly is the whole thing. I was not able to completely un understand the whole uh, concept when I'm trying to get a grasp on it. Okay. 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 So I'll Let's let you know. I'll let you know in detail what exactly is that uh, issue. Okay. 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 Because uh, uh, while I was uh, I am practicing, I am stuck with this because there is no stock in my warehouse, so I am not able to continue with that. Okay. Okay. So I'll let you know in detail what exactly why why exactly the the system is behaving in certain in certain, uh, you know, whenever we change that field is as shipping notification. Okay? Okay, fine. Yeah. Alright, yeah, Thanks, Manish. Yeah, alright guys. Okay. You guys take care. Yeah, yeah. I'll meet you tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Okay, bye.